Surely he's alive today, amen? Yeah! Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. I come today under the unction of the Holy Ghost to let you know that this word today is for you, a personal word for you. We know that Jesus is alive, but he here today to let you know as an individual that he loves you, that he cares. Maybe your name might be Ron, might be Dorothy or Pam or Diane or David or Ada, Thomas, Anna, Carmen, Jeff, Jose, Juan, John, Manny, Vanessa, Annette. Whatever your name may be today, the Lord has come here to let you know that I love you with an everlasting love. Amen? So the title of my sermon is Just For Me. Can you turn to somebody and say, Christ died just for me? <laughs> Tell somebody else he died, it was just for me. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to read the usual scripture for uh, this season from Isaiah 53, 1 through 5. And it reads, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of a dry ground, he has no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised, rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was a star, a despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But, this is the scripture text, but he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen? Amen, amen. I want you to know when I was a little one, in fact, I was probably born on a prill in North Carolina. My mom my whole family was from the Holiness Church. But by the time I got ready to go to Sunday school, uh, every time they would read that script and talk about Easter, I couldn't hold back crying. They used, every year they said, go get Dr. Lee, because she's crying again. And then they would say, well, you know, he died, but he's alive again. So I fell in love with the Lord at that time. And from the time I think I was about eight years old, my mother and aunt and used to sit around the fireplace. Y'all don't know nothing about the fireplace because you used to go out in the back and get that wood and put it on the fire. Oh, yeah, you know, sister. But they would talk about Jesus was coming back. I said, oh, he's coming back again. They didn't let children talk. You know, don't get into grown folks' things. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So I would listen to them, but what they didn't know, in the middle of the night for many years, I'd get up out of my bed and look out the window, looking for Jesus. I've been looking for Jesus for many years. I guess until I was almost going into the teenage years, I looked for him almost every night because they said he would come and you don't know when he's coming, you gotta be ready. But I fell in love with him then, and I love him now. Amen? So what we're going to talk about, I hope you can just bear with me, but the cross is a symbol from antiquity, a symbol that represents heaven and earth. The vertical, it, vertical is heaven, and the horizontal is earth. The cross is a universal accepted emblem 
And of all the emblems that could have been chosen, Christians years and years ago have chosen the cross. Now they could have chosen the crib or the manger uh, of baby Jesus. They could have chosen the carpenter's bench, which would indicate Jesus' youth and his labor. Or maybe they could have chosen a boat from which Jesus taught on the Sea of Galilee. They, of course, could have chosen an apron or a towel. You remember when Jesus washed the feet of the disciples to indicate his humble service? They could have chosen a stone where they rolled away from Joseph's tomb. They could have possibly used the throne of God as a symbol of divine sovereignty. You know, that's when John the Revelator saw in a vision from heaven. But they could have also used the dove. That was a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Out of all of these seven symbols that would be suitable, uh, that Jesus, that could have used uh, uh, to indicate Jesus, but instead, the chosen symbol came to be a simple cross. So they chose it to make a definitely explanation that in other words, they wanted to commemorate as central to their understanding of Jesus. Now they didn't want neither the birth of Jesus nor his youth, neither his teaching nor his service nor even the resurrection, nor his reign, nor his gift of the spirit, but it was his death, his crucifixion, where he bled and died for you and for me. Now, many times we see people wearing pendants, charms, rings, all about in the shape of a cross. You see it on churches, you see it, bell towers, you see it, pulpits and choir robes, and they all adorn the cross. We have one up there. You know, even rock stars, if you watch the television, unbelievers, gangbangers wear a cross of pure gold. You know, we see it so often that I think perhaps we have started to take the cross of Jesus for granted. We fail to understand the utter shock value of the cross. If we would take this chapter of Isaiah 53 uh, at face value, it means that Christ suffered more on the cross than any other human being ever suffered anywhere at any time. So we're going to talk today about the cross. Now, today, we're all talking about revival. Uh, you know, like, when are we going to have revival? Today's Christianity, we often wonder why we don't see the power of God like they did in the first century. They had miracle-working powers, and even they said the apostles uh, had miracle-working powers wherever they went. I'm reminded of the scene, you remember when Peter and John went up to the temple to pray and there was at the gate beautiful a man that was lame from his mother's womb. He had never walked. And so when they came up, uh, uh, maybe in the vernacular, they were, the, the guy was saying, alms for the poor. And Peter said, bruh, I ain't got no money, but silver and gold, <laughs> I don't have, but such as I have, I'm going to give to you, brother. And in the name of Jesus, he said to the man, rise up and walk. Now, why would I use this? I say this to say that the apostles, they didn't have the Bible like we have. They didn't have the Greek and the Hebrew, the Old Testament, New Testament, the concordance, all of that. But what we find out in the book of Acts that Peter and John were thrown in the prison for preaching Jesus. And when they were brought before the authorities, they said this, we cannot but speak 
the things we have seen and the things we have heard. Because he was saying that you thought you had killed the king of life, but he's alive. Amen? So what did they preach? They preached the cross. They preached the power of the cross. They had power and miracle work and power because they preached Jesus Christ dead and buried and rose again. I want you to know there is power in the preaching of the cross. We got to get back to that. A lot of times we don't do that anymore. But Apostle uh, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Amen? Now, when you look at the scripture, 1 Corinthians 1, 18, it says the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. So let me tell you, any preaching that is preached that does not center on the substitutionary death of Christ is doomed for failure. Ain't nobody gonna get saved. And we wonder why, if you're not gonna preach Jesus, you can't expect folks to file in at every altar or wherever. It is doomed to failure, and it does not have any gospel in it unless you're preaching Jesus. The gospel is Christ died for our sins, he died in our place. He died for you, and he died for me. Now, this text is perhaps the most moving prophecy of the cross. First of all, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement or the punishment of our peace was upon him. And this is the part we all like. And by his stripes, we were, we are, we're healed. Amen? There is a text in which we can write our name in. And that's why I started out. We can write, whoever, whatever your name is, you can write your name in because it's very personal. All the suffering was for you. And for me, in other words, the, the subject, just for me. Turn to somebody and tell them it was just for me. Amen. Christ's death was the death of one who loved. He loved. He was up close. He was very personal. And it was an individual thing that Christ died. I know you say, yes, he suffered uh, to free the world from the penalty of sin. But, but, but Jesus was intimately familiar with you. Everything about you he knew as a person, as an individual. In fact, the word says that every hair on your head is numbered. Even the ones you lost was numbered, amen. And because of this, he accepted and he fulfilled his sentence of death upon the cross and he did it on his own he did it for you and for me because i heard him say nobody nobody can take my life i lay it down and i can pick it up and he did it for you and he did it for me before christ every man stood separate and apart in his infinite heart, every man had a place, a destiny, a purpose. Even if there was only one soul, you hear that so often, in the world to be redeemed, if you were the only one standing there, he would have paid the price just for you because I want you to know he's that kind of God. He does a personal thing. He's a personal God, y'all. You know, that's down south talking. But John 3, 16, you all know that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And I want you to check this out. That whosoever, that's a singular person, whosoever believeth on him would not perish but have everlasting life. You are the whosoever he saw you before you were even born. 
The Bible tells us that God knew you before you were even formed in mama's belly, before you were a twinkle in your daddy's eye, before mama had a smile on her face. He knew you. This is the most important thing that I know. Psalms 139.13, when they said of God, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Now, do you know what this means, actually? When God sent his son to die on the cross over 2,000 years ago, God knew you. And he included the sins that you would commit in the future. And he included you among those to be forgiven by him. My God, how, what a God who, who knows you. And I think it, you could say, oh, for the grace of almighty God. His wounds were not some black and blue marks. The word wounded means he was tormented, pierced to death. He was killed for practically two different things. Rebellion against God, and the number two, will for rejection of God Almighty and His authority. But one thing I want to let you know today is that there is a distinct difference between transgression and sin. Transgression is the wicked acts that lies upon the surface, with maybe an example of jealousy or envy. But sin, and this is what He died for also is the deep corruption that lies within the heart. It is the inherited nature that we got from Adam. We were born with a disease called sin. But I'm so glad about it that in Psalms 91, 1C and verse 2, it said, God blots out our transgression and he washes away all iniquity and he cleanses us from sin. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Well, one thing about it is a question. Who is this one who was wounded, who was beaten and scourged until his back was a mass of bleeding flesh? Who is this one who was stripped of his garments and spat upon, humiliated and mocked? I want to know who was this one who wore a crown of thorns, sentenced to death. Tell me if you can. Who was this one that was led as a lamb to the slaughter, yet he opened not his mouth? Who is this one whose hands and feet were nailed to the cross with his arms outstretched? Whose weight of his body was jolted and pulled against the, sty- of the spikes as the cross was lifted up and let down. Who was this person who did all of this? But isn't he the one who said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men, all men unto me. I'm talking about the one who endured three hours of scorching noon heat and the unquenchable thirst gnawing away at his mouth and throat. I'm talking about the one who, in order to fulfill the scripture, under the words, I thirst. I'm talking about that. That was the one I'm talking about, smitten of God and forsaken, who cried out from the cross, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? The one that was numbered among the transgressors, crucified between two thieves, dying amid the darkness of heaven, he died. I want you to know he died till the sun went down at high noon. He died till the earth had a cosmic convulsion of an earthquake. I want you to know he died until the spirits of the dead saints got up from the grave that walked about in old Jerusalem. Oh, yes, he died. Who is this one who pierced his side, spilled his blood, 
There is a song that says, there is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath its flow and lose all its guilty stain. Oh, for the precious blood of Jesus. Somebody ought to praise him right now. Amen. Bless his name. The psalmist David said it took only the finger of God to create us. But the prophet Isaiah said it took his arms to redeem us. Amen. Now, why was he wounded? He hadn't done anything to desire death, to deserve death. Pilate himself had thoroughly examined and questioned him. And Pilate did something. He washed his hands. And he could only utter the words that I find no fault in him. The thief on the cross knew he was innocent. He said to the other thief, you know, we're getting what we deserve, but this man has done no wrong. It was a Messiah cut off, not for himself, but for you and for me. For our sake, he became our Passover lamb, sprinkling the blood for our salvation. The mystery of the suffering servants was revealed on the cross. It was vicarious suffering according to the will of God. And many people don't understand this. It was according to the will of God. Jesus was suffering for somebody else, not his own, but just for you and just for, amen, amen. Now I want to ask you a question. What's the name of this one? Who did all this for us? And right now, I'd like to introduce you to someone who suffered and died and rose from the grave. His name is Jesus. Can you call out his name? Jesus. Jesus. Call out his name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus became our substitute. He, was, he exchanged roles with us. He took our ears and ills and bore our pain. He carried our sorrow. The pain he bore was ours. It is the punishment of sin. It is the price of salvation. What a price of righteousness. What a price of redemption. Wounded for me. Bruised just for me. He was bruised, crushed, beaten to pieces, oppressed for our iniquities. Now I'm going to get to the part that we should really rejoice about. Because in Luke 4.18, which is a vision of this house, Love Gospel Assembly, when we think about it, everything that Jesus did is involved in the vision of this house. He died, he was crucified, dead, and buried, but he rose and he brought with us the vision of this house to serve the people in this community. Christ came to give his life for those who are bruised and oppressed. Jesus, our Lord, came to preach the gospel to the poor, those overlooked, pushed aside, neglected and depressed, the hurting, the afflicted. Now, I know you know what I'm talking about when I say that there is something about proud, arrogant people proud, arrogant human nature that generally just absolute neglect and despise the poor. Many times doors of opportunities are usually closed. Doors closed to those who have no voice at all. In Jesus' time and in even now, the poor especially need the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus was at home and he hung out with plain old ordinary poor folks like us. He hung out with fishermen and prostitutes and tax collectors and sinners, the poor. The kind that the world calls the lower class, the nobody. And Jesus was happy to minister 
to them, men and women, boys and girls, as they gathered around him. Now, even John the Baptist, who was in prison, sent his disciples to Jesus to inquire, are you the one or should we look for another? Jesus replied, the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted, those crushed in spirit, and Christ came to steal the waters for them, to calm the raging storms of life. He came to bless the sons and daughters of sorrow. Not only that, he came to bring deliverance to those held captives by the powers of hell, those that are shackled by habits of drug addiction and all kinds of vices. Jesus came to those that were bound in the mind and spirit. He came to loose the shackles and break the chains that will set them free. He has called us to this neighborhood to break the shackles and set the captive free. Amen? I know we can say once we were there too. But thanks to Almighty God, Jesus came along and he set us free. And he who the Son set free is free indeed. Hallelujah. He came to bring recovery of sight to the blind. Not only physical sight, but sight of the mind and the spirit. You see, when a person is under the captivity of the devil, he or she is absolutely blind. We are surrounded out here with blinded people. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says this. Whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine on them. But Jesus does what no other earthly power can do. He restores sight. He anoints the eyes. He translates us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now we can say, in other words, once I was blind, but now I see because Jesus Christ died for you and me. Amen. That was from David. I did a little rhyme there. Amen. Uh, that, that came on real quick, right? Amen. I might be a rapper soon. Amen. All right, let's wrap it up. All right. Jesus was bruised for the outcasts of society. The down and out of the homeless, the hungry, those stepped on, pushed out, pushed back, those oppressed and depressed, those tossed and thrown away like garbage. Our beloved Elder Rosa preached about those thrown in the dumpster. You remember that? But I want you to know that one day Jesus passed by he found us in the dumpster. He said that we were precious. We were valuable. So Jesus went dumpster diving. He pulled us out. He picked us up. He cleaned us up. He saved us. He put a song of praise in our mouths and a word of a testimony on our lips. And he told us to run on. Tell everybody that there is a somebody who can save anybody. And his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus crucified and he sacrificed himself to give us a second chance. He would have done it. He would have gone to any extent and he did and we praise him. He went to Calvary, where man's utter despair collided with God's unbending grace. Oh, grace. Somebody say grace. Oh, grace. Oh, for grace to love him more. Oh, for grace to trust him more. 
Jesus came to pay a debt he did not owe because we owe a debt that we could not pay. Amen, amen. He was wounded just for me. He was bruised just for me. And because of the cross, there is peace just for me. The punishment for our peace was a punishment. There's a price for peace. Peace does not come without cost, but Jesus willingly paid the price. I'm talking about that kind of peace of mind that says, I know everything going to be all right. That inner peace that the world says passes all understanding. The world can't understand the peace that God gives us. You know, when you are going through all kinds of trials, anybody been there? All kinds of trials and tribulation, all kinds of sickness and even some grief. And it seems that mountains are standing in your way, yet you wear a smile. Your neighbors don't understand you. The folks on 2G that don't serve the Lord, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> folks on your job think you're crazy. They don't under, even your family members said, I don't know what's wrong with them. We might have to put them away. They don't understand that you can walk around with a smile. Because I can tell you there's something on the inside that's holding the rain. There's something on the inside. And a voice whispered to you and said, yes, you can make it. The Holy Spirit will speak to you and said, I am the Lord your God. I will never leave you or forsake you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And then you go on and wear a smile. Amen, in spite of it. And that's why he died. And I want you to know the peace of God. When all of this happened, when the Lord speaks to you and says, I ain't going to leave you, the peace falls upon you and overshadows the darkness. And you know you can make it. And then you break out in a smile. Break out in a smile. Hallelujah. Oh, the peace of God. The shalom of God. The peace that passes all understanding. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about that work on the cross of Calvary that brought you and me into a right relationship with God. Romans 5.1 says, Therefore, being justified, I mean made right, by faith we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. And I was so glad to read John 14.27. Jesus was going on home, back home to be with God. He said, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives. You see, Jesus is our peace. He brings peace by breaking down every barrier. There's so many barriers that are put up to us, but every wall of petition that separates people from the presence of God, he breaks it down regardless of race, color, religion, wealth, position, appearance, or ability. Jesus has broken the wall down and it's all by the blood of the cross. Somebody ought to shout. Amen. And number four, by his stripes, we are healed. His torn flesh, his marred body, we are. You note the tense? We are healed. We are already healed. I don't know when I came in today, I believe that, that, that somehow Jesus has put healing in this place today. Amen? I don't know about you. If you feel that way, just reach up and receive it. Amen? Hallelujah. We got healing here today. We are healed. We are cured. We are mended, repaired, restored, made whole, mind, body, and spirit. 1 Peter 2.24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin 
and live for righteousness by his stripes, we were. It's already healed. I don't know about you. Whenever I get the pain or something, I pull that scripture out, and I keep reading it till the, till the pain goes away. I want you to know it will go. By his stripes, I was healed. By his, I tell every pain. I tell the devil, by his stripes, I'm healed. Somebody want to know how you're living so long? I tell the devil, by his stripes, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. We were healed at Calvary, healed of the disease of self-righteousness, healed of the disease of self-confidence, healed of our love to sin and the commission of sin. We were healed of our self-indulgence and self-seeking. Jesus paid it all. The song says, all to him we owe. He did it just for me. Amen? He voluntarily paid the debt of sin on Calvary. Calvary. Where God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. Calvary where God committed his love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Every sin was nailed to the cross with Jesus. And I want you to know that sin died there with him. When he rose even from the grave, our sin did not. Our sin is gone forever. He paid the price. Sin and death were defeated once and for all and for always. At Calvary, Christ was at his best. Nothing had been left undone. No other day does Jesus have to go back to finish his work at Calvary. When he cried in a loud voice, it is finished, this he did once. He became Savior and Redeemer. I want you to know that they laid his body in a tomb. And scripture lets us know, which we can rejoice, that while he was there, he went into hell. And he took the keys of death, hell, and the grave from the devil, and he led captivity captive. I think that was one of the worst days the devil ever had. But he's got a bigger one coming, amen? Amen? He want to whisper things in your ear, but you tell him, I know what's going to happen to you in the end. Amen. I want you to know that early one Sunday morning, around cock crowing time, he got up from the grave, never to die again. Jesus is alive. Somebody can say he's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He is our mediator between God and man. He's our advocate. He's a lawyer in the courtroom. He's our sorrow sharer and our burden bearer. Jesus is alive. Revelation 118a says, we see him, Jesus, standing amid the churches with the keys of death, hell, and every grave, every grave and life eternal in his hands. And he announces, this is what he said, I am he which liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Somebody ought to put your hands together and give him glory. I'm almost finished here. Our Lord was lied about, but lies couldn't hold him down. He's risen. Allah, our Lord, was hated, but hate couldn't hold him down. He's alive. His enemies were jealous of him, but jealousy couldn't hold him down. He is risen. He was slandered, but slander couldn't hold him down. He is written. In the end, he was killed, but even death, the grave, all the powers of hell and the forces of darkness could hold him down. He got up. He got up. He's alive. Amen. 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 Come on, just applaud him. Yes, he is. Jesus is alive. No more to stoop. He's alive forevermore. And in closing, I want to say 
people of Love Gospel Assembly, it's time for us to arise and shine for your light has come. Our season has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon us because of what Christ did on the cross. And I want you to know we can do whatever the Lord says we can do. His life and his death and resurrection affirms that we can do it. I don't care what the devil says. We can do what God tells us. Not only is he alive, no longer they tried to kill him and thought it would be all over. But I'm glad, like I said in the beginning, Jesus is coming back again. He came the first time to earth in humiliation. He's coming back again in glory. And every eye is going to see him. We need to shout, shout the name of Jesus, who has lifted us up to heights and made us his own people forever. Praise God. Can we just stand to our feet and say, God, Jesus is alive. He's well. He paid it all. He paid it all for me. Praise God. Amen, 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 amen. Somebody ought to call his name. Let's call his name and make the devil mad. Jesus. Let's call his name and let the devil run out of here. Jesus. Let's call his name that Jesus. every witch and warlock can no longer stand in his presence. Jesus, Jesus is alive. Amen, 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 amen. I don't know, you may be visiting with us. And the Lord sent you purposely because he wanted you to know that you are so important, so valuable. And he wanted you to know that everything that was done on the cross was done for you. And that's why my message was just for me. I don't know, maybe you don't know him, but I'm gonna tell you he is somebody to know. And if you say that I don't really know him, but on this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, I would like for someone to pray with me about knowing Jesus since he's known you before you were in your mother's womb. So as we began to play the music, if you need someone to pray, just come to this altar. We're going to be out of here. I know you want to show off your hat and your suit and your shoes and everything, but come, come, come. The bride says, come. Come to Jesus. Come, come, come. You may be in the balcony and make your way down here. Bring your pocketbook with you. Amen. Amen. Hey, the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, you are. Come on to Jesus. Come on to the lover of my life. Of your life. Come on, come on. I know you're in the back. We're going to wait for you. Let this be the day that you said, I give my life to you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. The name. Hallelujah. Come on. Yep, so I precious. See you. Come on. Come on. That's healing for you today, also. I don't know what sickness you got, but Jesus said, You heal. Your fears and dry your tears. Hallelujah. Why? Yeah, come on. Away come on, sweetheart. Pain. Come on, yeah. Yeah, if we're you looking don't for know you. What Jesus has been looking for you. Spread. He's been waiting for you. He knew you were going to be here today. Find the come words on. To come to say. Jesus. Hallelujah. Say the name. Uh, say the name. Say the name. Of Jesus. Yeah, come on, fill up these altars. Say the name. Yeah. Hallelujah. Of Jesus. Just for you. Say Just the for me. name. Yeah. So Hallelujah. Precious. There's no If 
you don't know what else to say. Anybody else before we change? You can't find the words to say. Say the Jesus. name. Come Say as you are. The name of Jesus. Don't preach it. Come on. Say Jesus. the name. Say the name. Say, Say the, the name. name of There's oh, healing yeah. in that name. Say the name. Say, Say the, the name. name of There's forgiveness in that name. Say, Say the, the name, name of me. There's oh. life everlasting in the name. Oh, Say the name. Say the name of Jesus. 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 Say, say it. Say the name of Jesus. I just wanted to say that you've gathered here. We're going to go back to the music. But you know, Jesus said he did all this for you. And he said that you came because you know that everything is not right. And they call that a sinner. And said, Lord, that is me, I repent. But he said, if you can say with your mouth and believe in your heart that God sent his son to die for you, then you can be saved. So today, if you can confess it with your heart and with your mouth, it can be declared that you're saved. Some of the workers are gonna come to you and speak to you. Other workers, elders, and ministers, come. Let's pray for the people. Come on, let's sing that again. There's no other name I know. We say the name, say the name of Jesus. Jesus. We say the name of Jesus. Say the name. So precious, no other name I know that can calm your fears and dry your tears and wipe away your pain. Sometimes you don't know what else to say. You can't find the word to pray. Can't find the words to say. Say, say the, the name. name. Say his name. Say his name. Oh. Say the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Say, say the, the name, name of Jesus. Say the, the name of Jesus. Jesus. He's mighty to save you if you call upon his name. Say the name, he's going to make a way when you say Jesus. He's got mighty power. He's calling you, come this hour. My friend, he won't turn you away. All you got to do is call upon his name and say Jesus. from my sin. I want to be born again. Take my life and make it over again. I know you got the power. I'm calling in the sound. Take my life 
and make it new. I believe in what you do. You do for me. You came to set me free, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We say your name, Lord Jesus. Say in the name. Say the name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. He's gonna make a way when you see Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. You don't have to be afraid. Say the name of Jesus. By his blood, a new covenant he made to forgive every sin you've ever done. No other name, only he's the one to cleanse and change your very soul. By his stripes you have been made whole. In the name of Jesus, say the name of Jesus, say the name of Jesus, say the name, say the name of Jesus, 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 say the name of don't know anything else to praise, just say his name. Ah, uh, he's done so much. He's given his all. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 Jesus is alive, hallelujah, 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 praise his name, praise his name, praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. I know that some of you have to leave. I'm going to say the benediction so that you can go. But others, you can remain here. The presence of the Lord is so heavy in this place. I don't know what your needs may be, but God is here to fulfill them. Yes, he is. He's alive. He's paid the price. His grace, his unmerited grace, his blood, his blood he shed. Praise God. Amen, amen. God, thank you for everything that you've done today in this place. From the worship singers to the dancers to the word, to the welcome, to every soul that decided to come out. And for those who are new in the kingdom, we know that the angels of heaven are rejoicing of those who have come into the kingdom. We praise you. We thank you. Lord, seal them with your Holy Spirit. Lord, give us the heart that when we walk out of this place, we begin to tell everybody there's somebody 
who can save anybody. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Come on before we leave. When I count to three, I want you to give out a shout that Jesus is alive. One, two, three. He's alive. Praise God. Thank you, family of God, for staying with us today. God has spoken to us today. The church must rise up and be the voice of God and speak, thus saith the Lord. This is our time to take our place and stand between the living and the dead, to be intentional and to seek the Lord. Praise God. So we hope that you were blessed today, that you were ministered today uh, through the word and the ministry. So if you want to stay connected to Love Gospel Assembly, please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and don't forget to click the like and share our YouTube page. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the bell. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Bless you.